poem one of the winnowing fan poems on the great war this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by david wales the winnowing fan poems on the great war by robert lawrence binion poem one the fourth of august now in thy splendour go before us spirit of england arden died enkindle this dear earth that bore us in the hour of peril purified the cares we hugged drop out of vision our hearts with deeper thoughts dilate we step from days of sour division into the grandeur of our fate for us the glorious dead have striven they battled that we might be free we to their living cause are given we arm for men that are to be among the nations nobliest chartered england recalls her heritage in her is that which is not bartered which force can neither quell nor cage for her immortal stars are burning with her the hope that's never done the seed that's in the springs returning the very flower that seeks the sun she fights the fraud that feeds desire on lies in a lust to enslave or kill the barren creed of blood and iron vampire of europe's wasted will endure o earth and thou awaken purged by this dreadful winnowing fan o wronged untamable, unshaken soul of divinely suffering man end of the fourth of august Poem two of the Winnowing Fan Poems on the Great War by Robert Lawrence Binion. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Poem two Strange Fruit This year the grain is heavy ripe, the apple shows a ruddier stripe. Never berries so profuse, blackened with so sweet a juice, on brambly hedges summer died, the yellow leaves begin to glide but earth in careless lapful treasures pledge of overbrimming measures as if some rich unwonted zest stirred prodigal within her breast and now while plenty's left uncared the fruit unplucked the sickle spared where men go forth to waste and spill toiling to burn destroy and kill lo also side by side with these beast hungers ravening miseries the heart of man has brought to birth splendours richer than his earth now in the thunder hour of fate each one is kinder to his mate the surly smile the hard forbear there's help and hope for all to share and sudden visions of good will transcending all the scope of ill like a glory of rare weather link us in common light together a clearness of the cleansing sun where none's alone and all are one and touching each a priceless pain we find our own true hearts again no more the easy masks deceive we give we dare and we believe End of Strange Fruit Poem 3 of The Winnowing Fan, Poems on the Great War by Robert Lawrence Binion. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Poem 3 The New Idol Magnificent the Beast, look in the eyes of the fell tiger towering on his prey beautiful in his power to pounce and slay and effortless in action he denies all but himself he gloats on his weak prize roaring the anger of wild breath at bay blank anger like an element whose way is mere annihilation terrible eyes but there is one more to be feared who can escape the prison of his own wrath whose will lives beyond life who smiles with quiet lips most terrible because most tender man not only uncowed but irresistible when the cause fires him to the finger-tips 
end of the new idol poem four of the winnowing fan poems on the great war by robert lawrence binion this librivox recording is in the public domain poem four the harvest red reapers under these sad august skies proud war-lords careless of ten thousand dead who leave earth's kindly crops unharvested as you have left the kindness of the wise for brutal menace and for clumsy lies the spawn of insolence by bragging fed with power and fraud in faiths and honours stead accounting these but good stupidities you reap a heavier harvest than you know disnaturing a nation you have thieved her name her patient genius while you thought to fool the world and master it you sought reality it comes in hate and woe in the end you also shall not be deceived end of the harvest poem five of the winnowing fan poems on the great war by robert lawrence binion this librivox recording is in the public domain poem five to the belgians o race that caesar knew that won stern roman praise what land not envies you the laurel of these days you built your cities rich around each towered hall without the statued niche within the pictured wall your ship-thronged wharves your marts with gorgeous venice vied peace and her famous arts were yours though tide on tide of europe's battle scourged black field and reddened soil from blood and smoke emerged peace and her fruitful toil yet when the challenge rang the warlord comes give room fearless to arms you sprang against the odds of doom like your own damian who sought that leper's isle to die a simple man for men with tranquil smile so strong in faith you dared defy the giant scorn ignobly to be spared though trampled spoiled and torn and in your faith arose and smote and smote again till those astonished foes reeled from their mounds of slain the faith that the free soul untaught by force to quail through fire and dirge and dole prevails and shall prevail still for your frontier stands the host that knew no dread your little stubborn lands nameless immortal dead End of To the Belgians Poem six of the Winnowing Fan Poems on the Great War by Robert Lawrence Binion. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Poem six Louvain To Dom Brune d'Estre, O S B one it was the very heart of peace that thrilled in the deep minster bell's wide throbbing sound when over old roofs evening seemed to build security this world has never found your cloister looked from caesar's rampart high o'er the fair city clustered orchard trees married their murmur with the dreaming sky it was the house of love and living peace and there we talked of youth's delightful years in italy and england now o oh friend i know not if i speak to living ears or if upon you too is come the end peace is on louvain dead peace of spilt blood upon the mounded ashes where she stood two but from that blood those ashes there arose not hoped for terror cowering as it ran but divine anger flaming upon those defamers of the very name of man abortions of their blind hyena creed who for protection of their battle host against the unarmed of them they had made to bleed whose hearts they had tortured to the uttermost without a cause past pardon fired and tore the towers of fame and beauty 
while they shot and butchered the defenceless in the door but history shall hang them high to rot unburied in the face of times unborn mankind's abomination and last scorn end of louvain poem seven of the winnowing fan poems on the great war by robert lawrence binion this librivox recording is in the public domain poem seven to goethe goethe who saw and who foretold a world revealed new springing from its ashes old on valmy field when prussia's sullen hosts retired before the advance of ragged starved but freedom-fired soldiers of france if still those clear olympian eyes through smoke and rage your ancient europe scrutinize what think you sage are these the armies of the light that seek to drown the light of lands where freedom's fight has won renown will they blot also out your name because you praise all works of men that shrine the flame of beauty's ways wherever men have proved them great nor drunk with pride saw but a single swollen state and naught beside nor dreamed of drilling europe's mind with threat and blow the way professors have designed genius should go or shall a people rise at length and see and shake the fetters from its giant strength and grandly break this pedantry of feud and force to man untrue thundering and blundering on its course to death and rue end of to goethe poem eight of the winnowing fan poems on the great war by robert lawrence binion this librivox recording is in the public domain poem eight at Rance. their hearts were burning in their breasts too hot for curse or cries they stared upon the towers that burned before their smarting eyes there where since france began to be anointed kings knelt down there where the maid the unafraid received her vision's crown the senseless shell with nightmare scream burst and fair fragments fell torn from their centuries of peace as by the rage of hell what help for wrath what use for wail before a dumb despair all ancient high heroic france seemed burning bleeding there within the pillars soar to gloom lit by the glimmering rose spirits of beauty shrined in stone afar from mortal woes hearing not though their haunted shade is stricken and all around with splintering flash and brutal crash the ghostly aisles resound and there upon the pavement stretched the german wounded groan to see the dropping flames of death and feel the shells their own too fierce the fire helped by their foes they stagger out to air the green-gray coats are seen are known through all the crowded square ah now for vengeance deep the groan a death knell quietly soldiers unsling their rifles lift and aim with steady eye but sudden in the hush between death and the doomed there stands against those levelled guns a priest gentle with outstretched hands be not as guilty as they he cries each lets his weapon fall as if a vision showed him france and vengeance vain and small end of at Reims. poem nine of the winnowing fan poems on the great war by robert lawrence binion this librivox recording is in the public domain poem nine to the enemy complaining be ruthless then scorn slaves of scruple avow the blow planned with such patience that you deal so terribly hack on and care not how the innocent fall live out your faith of steel then you speak speech that we can comprehend it cries from the unpitied blood you spill 
and so we stand against you and to the end flame as one man the weapon of one will but when your lips usurp the loyal phrase of honour querulously voluble of chivalry and kindness and you praise what you despise for weakness of the fool then the gorge rises bleat to dupe the dead the wolf beneath the sheepskin drips too red End of to the enemy complaining Poem ten of the Winnowing Fan Poems on the Great War by Robert Lawrence Binion. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Poem ten To Women Your hearts are lifted up, your hearts that have foreknown the utter price. Your hearts burn upward like a flame of splendor and of sacrifice for you you too to battle go not with the marching drums and cheers but in the watch of solitude and through the boundless night of fears swift swifter than those hawks of war those threatening wings that pulse the air far as the vanward ranks are set you are gone before them you are there and not a shot comes blind with death and not a stab of steel is pressed home but invisibly it tore and entered first a woman's breast amid the thunder of the guns the lightnings of the lance and sword your hope your dread your throbbing pride your infinite passion is outpoured from hearts that are as one high heart withholding naught from doom and bale burningly offered up to bleed to bear to break but not to fail end of to women poem eleven of the winnowing fan poems on the great war by robert lawrence binion this librivox recording is in the public domain poem eleven for the fallen with proud thanksgiving a mother for her children england mourns for her dead across the sea flesh of her flesh they were spirit of her spirit fallen in the cause of the free solemn the drums thrill death august and royal sings sorrow up into immortal spheres there is music in the midst of desolation and a glory that shines upon our tears they went with songs to the battle they were young straight of limb true of eye steady and aglow they were staunch to the end against odds uncounted they fell with their faces to the foe they shall grow not old as we that are left grow old age shall not weary them nor the years condemn at the going down of the sun and in the morning we will remember them they mingle not with their laughing comrades again they sit no more at familiar tables of home they have no lot in our labour of the daytime they sleep beyond england's foam but where our desires are and our hopes profound felt as a well-spring that is hidden from sight to the innermost heart of their own land they are known as the stars are known to the night as the stars that shall be bright when we are dust moving in marches upon the heavenly plain as the stars that are starry in the time of our darkness to the end to the end they remain End of For the Fallen Poem 12 of The Winnowing Fan Poems on the Great War by Robert Lawrence Binion This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Poem 12 Ode for September 1. On that long day when England held her breath, suddenly gripped at heart and called to choose her part between her loyal soul and luring sophistries we watched the wide green-bosomed land beneath driven and tumultuous skies we watched the volley of white shower after shower desolate with fierce drops the fallen flower 
and still the rain's retreat drew glory on its track and still when all was darkness and defeat upon dissolving cloud the bow of peace shone back so in our hearts was alternating beat with very dread elate and earth dyed all her day in colours of our fate two but oh how faint the image we foretold in fancies of our fear now that the truth is here and we awake from dreams yet think it still a dream it bursts our thoughts with more than thought can hold and more than human seem these agonies of conflict elements at war yet not with vast indifference casually crushing nay it is as if were hurled lightnings that murdered seeking out their prey as if an earthquake shook to chaos half the world equal in purpose as in power to slay and thunder stunned our ears streaming in rain of blood on torrents that are tears Three around a planet rolls the drum's alarm far where the summer smiles upon the utmost isles danger is treading silent as a fever breath now in the north the secret waters arm under the wave is death they fight in the very air the virgin air hovering on fierce wings to the onset there nations to battle stream earth smokes and cities burn heaven thickens in a storm of shells that scream the long lines shattering break turn and again return and still across a continent they teem moving in myriads more than ranks of flesh and blood but soul with soul at war four all the hells are awake the old serpents hiss from dungeons of the mind fury of hate born blind madness and lust despairs and treacheries unclean they shudder up from man's most dark abyss but there are heavens serene that answer strength with strength they stand secure they arm us from within and we endure now are the brave more brave now is the cause more dear the more the tempests of the darkness rave as when the sun goes down the shining stars are clear radiant the spirit rushes to the grave glorious it is to live in such an hour but life is lovelier yet to give five alas what comfort for the uncomforted who knew no cause nor sought glory or gain they are taught homeless in homes that burn what human hearts can bear the children stumble over their dear dead wandering they know not where and there is one who simply fights obeys tramps till he loses count of nights and days tired mired in dust and sweat far from his own hearthstone a common man of common earth and yet the battle winner he a man of no renown where food for cannon pays a nation's debt this is earth's hero whom the pride of empire tosses careless to his doom six now will we speak while we have eyes for tears and fibres to be wrung and in our mouths a tongue we will bear wrongs untold but will not only bear not only bear but build through striving years the answer of our prayer that whosoever has the noble name of man shall not be yoked to alien shame that life shall be indeed life not permitted breath of spirits wrenched and forced to others need robbed of their nature's joy and free alone in death the world shall travail in that cause shall bleed but deep in hope it dwells until the morning break which the long night foretells seven o children filled with your own airy glee or with a grief that comes so swift so strange it numbs if on your growing youth this page of terror bite harden not then your senses feel and be the promise of the light o heirs of man keep in your hearts not less the divine torrents of his tenderness tis ever war 
but rust grows on the sword the tale of earth is strewn with empires heaped in dust because they dreamed that force should punish and prevail the will to kindness lives beyond their lust their grandeurs are undone deep deep within man's soul are all his victories won end of ode for september end of the winnowing fan poems on the great war by robert lawrence binion